Hey guys, and welcome to episode 11 of Zerg's single player survival series season 1. I'm here at my base, and I'm just gonna check here on my fuel levels. Remember last episode we had set this uh, iron tank up, and it looks like it's, it's still getting nice and full. And upstairs, we had set up our uh, semi-fluid generator. Now, I was wondering how much this actually produces. And there's a way that we can tell. If we look up IC2, there's actually a tool that'll help us with that. And that's the EU reader. Really easy to make. Electronic circuit some copper cables, and glowstone. So let's go ahead and grab one piece of iron for the electronic circuit, and we'll go ahead and put this in the rolling mode. Throw that in there. Remember we made our metal former last episode. And let's grab one more cable. And Actually, we're going to need... Okay, so we're going to need these to make our electronic circuit. Let me just grab one piece of glowstone here. And I should have some rubber that I'd smelted up. I'm also going to need at least one piece of copper. Ah, might as well make it two. And we'll put this into extruding mode and throw our copper in here. And that'll make copper cables. So let's go ahead and make our electronic circuit. And I think we're going to need one more piece of, well, good thing I put two in there. And now we should be able to go ahead and I'm just going to insulate all of these. And our cable, electronic circuit, and glowstone. EU reader. Let's see what this tells us. Maybe we can only use it on cables. Let's go downstairs. Uh, before I do, let's go ahead and just throw... I don't know. I don't have any ores that uh, that haven't been smelted up yet. Hmm. I have dark iron. You know what? Let's see. I have a little bit of ferrous. Let me just grind this up here real quick. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll run right downstairs. And if we look here, it probably will tell us that there's no current running. Why is it not telling us anything? But if we go to our electric furnace and open it up, you know it might be because of where we're standing. Let's see if we can do it now. Nope. Okay, let's open up our electronic furnace or electric furnace, throw in something so that way it's running, and now look. Maybe the EU reader's broken. Hmm. It's supposed to tell us how much EU is running through the cable. It doesn't seem to be working. That's okay. Now, I also set this up to eject to the top and move my metal former a little bit closer, because we're going to have more machines. And so now I just have a gold chest right on top, which is just the upgrade to the iron chest. And if we look, I'm actually starting to run out of resources, mainly iron and copper. And that's just because I'm getting into a lot of IC2 stuff. So I'm going to do something that I don't normally do. And for this, we're going to need a couple of diamonds, some glass. Some glass panes. Let's go ahead and grab. I'm going to need another stick. 
So let's get a couple more sticks here. And I want to get into a mod that I don't normally play a lot with. Computer craft. And what I want to do is I want to make a computer. So I'm going to need one piece of redstone and a couple of pieces of smooth stone. Luckily, I have some right here. Eh, just in case, we'll grab a little bit extra. So let's go ahead and make a computer, and that's why I grabbed the glass panes. And I want to take that computer, and I want to make it into a turtle. Where's the turtle? Right here. So I'm going to need a chest. And so there's a chest. And I'm going to need a little bit more iron. And turtle. I also want to take that turtle and give him a pickaxe. Just like that. Now, first thing I want to do is go ahead and place my turtle down. And name him. So... So now he's labeled as Miner, and the reason that I want to do that is, let me sleep through the night here. So the reason that I want to name him is, if I pick him up, I want him to retain any programs that I might write. Who knows? I also want him to retain his fuel level. Right now he doesn't have any. So let's give him a little bit of fuel. Luckily I have charcoal. And... He'll go ahead and take that in, and we can see we have a good amount of fuel now. So let's go ahead and pick him up. And what I want to do... Ah, armor Creeper. I wonder what happens if the Armor Creeper explodes. I know the Fire Creeper will set stuff on fire, and the Earth Creeper will... Uh, I think it's earth or dirt creeper will leave like a big ball of dirt where he explodes. So I wonder what the armor creeper does. But I didn't really want to let him blow up. So what I want to do with my mining turtle is let's come right over here. And I want to set him up, uh, let's just say right here. And I want to tell him to tunnel. And let's say 16 blocks. And what he'll go ahead and do is he'll just go ahead and dig everything out for me. Nice. Now, I want to use uh, the turtle for a couple of reasons. One, I want him to go, I want to, to clear this land a little bit. Not a lot, just. 16 blocks, just so I have a little bit more space, but it also means that I don't need to do it, and when I'm done with him here, I can take him down to my mining area and get some more uh, iron and copper and things like that. Looks like my clay's doing really, really good. The nice thing is, is peat. We can uh, use just like coal in... Um, you know, in the boiler or wherever else we might want to use it. Now, one thing I noticed is this refinery, it will use uh, up to 150 MJ per tick. And you can see here, it's not getting a lot of power. It's, it's really slowing down at times. And that also takes away the power from my harvester. And that's just because I'm running hobbyist steam engines. And if you look at my steam, I'm producing a lot. So I can use a lot more than this. But these only output 2 MJ per tick. So let's see if we can find a way to make uh, a little bit more as far as power for MJ. So if you remember last episode, I said we were going to do something 
with these steel plates. And I happen to have a little bit of steel here as well. Go ahead and grab a little bit of cobble. And if we look up engine, we can see that there's a couple different kinds. We could use a peat fired engine, but that's a, a totally different uh, kind of fuel system. So since we have the boiler set up, and right now we're using the hobbyist steam engines, which uses 10 millibuckets of steam, and it produces 2 MJ per tick. We could also make the commercial steam engines, which produce twice as much, but they use twice as much steam. And those just use iron plates. Now, the industrial steam engine produces four times as much as the hobbyist that we have right now, but it also uses four times as much steam. But they use those steel plates that we have. So, we should be able to make, well, let's say six. Let's go ahead and make six of these because we have the steel plates and see uh, how much of that steam that we're making that we can actually use. So we're going to need a little bit of glass, a couple of pistons, and some steel gears, which are basically steel around a stone gear. Let me just make sure that I don't have more steel sitting downstairs. A couple pieces. Let me go ahead and just throw some more charcoal in there, just in case we need it. So we're going to need a little bit of redstone. And we're going to need some wood. You know what, let's just grab it, this little bit here. And convert it all to planks. And make us a couple of pistons. Oh, I need some iron. And pistons. So six pistons. We're going to need six pieces of glass. Because I remember I want to make six of them. And we're going to need six steel gears. So we're first going to need some sticks. Actually, we're going to need 12 stone gears. Let's see, this will give us seven. And this should give us the other five that we need. So we're going to need wood gears and then surround them with stone. To get stone gears, I'm going to leave a little bit more cobblestone. And there's our stone gears. And I don't think we're going to have enough. So we're going to have enough for five. Hmm, that's only going to be two engines. So I'm going to need some more steel, but for right now... We can go ahead and make uh, at least the ones that we have the materials for. So it looks like two for right now. I'm going to have to make a little bit more steel. And what we can do is just go ahead and come right out here. And I'm going to replace this one here. And this one here. And we should be able to just plop this right same place that we had these other ones and just orient them the right way. Now, that's going to create a lot more power than we had before. Now, they just like these uh, hobbyist steam engines, they are going to take a little bit of time to get up to max, but they will produce 8 MJ. Let's see how our steam's doing. Okay, we're just starting to get into it, so it looks like we can support uh, quite a few more. And you can see that I cleared out quite a, a good bit of area. Oh, well, I'll have to clean some of that water up. So I'm going to cook up just a little bit more steel and make the rest of those engines. Okay, it looks like I finally got enough steel to finish that off. It took quite a while, and while that was doing its thing, I was clearing out this nice big area and replacing the ground with dirt. 
and letting my turtle do its thing. So now we should be able to come right over here. I just put these away. Looks like I ran out of space for wood. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. And looks like my oil ran out too. Which is why now I have an excess of power. So let's see. We should be able to go ahead and replace these two here. And see how that works as far as our, our steam goes. Let's go ahead and whack these in into position. Let's check our steam before we place the other two. Hmm. I don't know that it's going to be able to keep up with two more. Well, let's hop up top, go ahead and change out one more, and see if we start losing steam. Because it's it's better to... well, you know what, these will equalize out if there's not enough steam. Uh, let's see... Yeah, see, these are running at about half efficiency. So we don't quite have enough steam to do all of those. Let's see how this comes out now. It should start to rise. I'm going to give it just a second, see if these hit eight. Because the hobbyist, I mean, I can always put a couple of hobbyists here. Well... Eh. Why not? We'll just go ahead and put all of these down. And there we go. They equalize out and use all the steam that they can. But we should be able to basically now use up all of the steam that we're producing. Let's go check out our oil well because it looks like it ran dry. Yep, looks like we're out of oil. That's okay. We should be able to just go ahead and pick these up here and move them over to another spot. And that should be everything. Let's go ahead and grab the pump here. Yeah. And there should be more oil. Ooh. I can always use these right here. These cinder pearls. Definitely use more blaze powder. So let's see. There's some more oil. There's some more. There's some more. There was some over there. So we have a, a good amount that we can still work with. And... You know, I could go try to find some spouts, too. Uh, let's see if this... It does go down, but that doesn't look like it goes down into, like, uh, anywhere. Hmm. Looks like they're just little pools here on the surface. And then this one just kind of flows down into the water. Yeah, I don't see any actual, like, place that, uh, that it looks like it's, it's a big pocket or anything. That's okay. Let's set this one up right here. And I'm just going to put that there for right now. Place our pump down. And cobble. We should be able to put our cobble here and get this started again. And ender tank right on top. So this will start grabbing the oil from here. And it normally uh, it should start from the, the farthest away, the farthest source block away. And let's just make sure that it starts running here. There it goes. Okay. Looks like it is starting to pick up oil now. So let's head back to our base. 
and see how we're doing for fuel. Uh, looks like our fuel's doing okay. We have uh, 53 buckets in reserve, just in case, and still climbing. So our processing should be doing a lot better now. And I did go ahead and put down all six of the industrial steam engines. Let's see how they're working here. Looks like they're going to equalize out to just under 4 MJ each. So it still doubles our power uh, that we were getting before. So this should run a lot better. Oh, wow. And then this should be just fine. Now, looks like we are getting more wood than we're able to use. So we might want to think about maybe expanding the boiler, make it even bigger. And that'll help us uh, use more wood. The other thing we could do is find another use for charcoal. Like, well, I don't know, start making some RF and get into thermal expansion. But first, what I'd like to do, since we have a good amount of fuel and this power is working out pretty well. Actually, let me go ahead and recharge some of my stuff here. I'm going to let my uh, jetpack fill back up. I want to make these machines faster. And now that I have a good power source, I can definitely do that. But I don't want to just make them faster. I kind of want to get into some of the other machines from Industrial Craft. So let's see. I see two. One of the other machines that I'd like to make is a canning machine. It's really easy. Electronic circuit basic machine casing, and some tin item casings. Now I'm also going to need a upgrade for this one too, the transformer upgrade. So let me go ahead and get this uh, put together, or at least the, the parts that I need, and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so I have everything that I need. My electronic circuit, basic machine casing, and then my tin item casings get me my canning machine. And I'll go ahead and plop it down right here. Go ahead and make my hole in the floor. Plop it down, make sure to put my transformer upgrade because this can only accept 32 EU. And we just go downstairs, just like before, and hook up power. And I made some extra cabling, just because when I need it for uh, electronic circuits and everything else, I'd like to have it instead of having to, to make a whole bunch. And just because I've been doing fairly well on copper, let's go ahead and... I would just throw this in here in the extruding mode. So it'll make some more copper cables. And now my canning machine has power. Now, there's a couple different things that we can do with the canning machine. And what I want to do is this mode right here. And I'm going to need a little bit of lappies. Or say, let's say six. Hmm. We'll just do half a stack. So 32. And what I want to do is I want to macerate lappies. And it'll take a little while. And it should go into the furnace, but I don't think that the furnace will do anything with it. I'm going to give it just a second and make sure. And while I'm doing that, I want to take a little bit of the tin. Now, tin can be used uh, to make buckets. So I won't have to use my iron for that. Which is good, because I don't have a lot of iron. Let me just double check, make sure... Okay, looks like it's not even going to go into the furnace, which is good. But, we can also go like this and make cans, and it'll make 12 of them. Now, they're one use, uh, one time use, once we use them, they're gone, but, eh, it's okay. So, let's make... 
Ah, 36 should be good. And then all we have to do with our cans is go ahead and right click. No. Why can't we? Ah. Uh, so now we have some cells. And these, I can come out here and just right click and fill them up. Now, I already filled up uh, a couple of extras. And now we have our lapis lazuli dust. The other thing we're going to need is we're going to need to fill this tank with water. So there's a couple ways we can do that. Uh, I've already done an aqueous accumulator. But what I'd like to do this time is go ahead and grab one ender pearl. And I think I'm going to need some smooth stone. I'm also going to need my transfer pipe. And let's see here. We want, actually, we want a node. So we want a liquid node. But to get a liquid node, we first need a item transfer node. So I'm going to need a chest and some redstone. And we should be able to make a chest pretty easily. So chest, little bit of redstone, ender pearl, smooth stone, and then one of our transfer pipes. Gets us two transfer nodes. And then to make them liquid, we just need two pieces of iron, a bucket, and some blue dye, or in this case, lapis. So two pieces of lapis. And I'm just going to grab some tin. Remember how I said we can make buckets out of tin. So that'll help us uh, cut down on, on the uh, iron that we're using. I am going to need two pieces of iron now. And two lapis. And there we go. Liquid transfer node. Now... What I need to do is go and make an infinite water source where I'm going to be using it. And there we go. Not sure why it got all messed up. Probably I was clicking a little too fast. So let's see where our canning, that's the metal former there, canning machine right here. So let's put it right here. And I do need to put one piece of dirt. And that's just because we have to put down our transfer node first. And fill this up with water here. And you can see here the liquid transfer node will hold a lot of water and then it'll just output it wherever we need it. So in this case, we need it right here. And there we go. So what we should be able to do is run right in here, go to our canning machine, throw our water cells in, and lappies. And I should have more. And it should get us some coolant. So this is going to take a little while to get us, uh, it can only hold eight uh, buckets worth of coolant. So I'm going to have to make a few more cells. But what I wanted to do was use the cells because I have a lot more tin than I do iron. And uh, it looks like tin is starting to run low, but we should be able to do... 12. Yeah, that should work just fine. I should be able to just go ahead and make uh, a few more cells, and we can take this coolant then and put it into uh, cells. So now I have some empty cells, and what I want to do is make a portable tank. Now, I'm doing all of this because, one, this is a different way to make coolant. 
But two, I kind of want to save on my resources, being as low as I am. So what I can do is go and put a fluid duct right on the side here. Go ahead and throw my tank, portable tank, right on top. Tell this to output and install a servo. And I'll tell it ignore the uh, redstone signal. So this will go ahead and fill up my portable tank now. And it'll make more coolant. And if we take this over here to our fluid transposer, and I'm going to go ahead and pop it right down on top and tell this to be output mode. And with our fluid transposer, I'm going to tell it to accept liquids from the top. And now we should be able to take our empty cells and go ahead and fill them and make 10k coolant cells. Now these don't stack. So make sure you have a lot of room in your inventory. But what I want to do now is since we have so much power, I can take these 10k coolant cells, an electronic circuit, and two copper cables and make an overclocker. This will decrease the processing time of any of our machines by 70%, but you notice that it increases the power by usage by quite a bit. So I think the first machine that I want to put this in is probably going to be my macerator. And all I have to do is plop it right here. And unfortunately, I don't have any ores to show the, the speed difference. But it's, it's quite a big difference. Now, keep in mind that means it's going to use more power even quickly, or even quicker. So, between this episode and next, what I'll probably do is go and make one overclocker for each of my machines. And the only reason that I'm going to do just one is I'm so low on iron. I'm also going to be doing some mining between this episode and next to see if I can find some iron and use my turtle too. I, uh, I also did not put out the world download for episode 10, and that's mainly because I wanted to get this area cleared before I did that. So that way, uh, you guys, if you download it, you have a nice big area to work with. So I will be putting the uh, the world download in this episode. Again, go ahead and check the uh, description for the link. I hope you guys enjoyed, and with that, I will see you guys later.